find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter is here for the Indie Mayhem Show episode 73. We got a big, big one coming up. Uh, another super indie packed episode with Cedric Ale Alexander and Sugar Dunkerton joining us uh, for interviews this week. But first, please go check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This and so many other shows going on. Talk about all aspects of, uh, of uh, professional wrestling, including, hey, you might be interested in the new Ring of Honor Midweek War show that they're doing, along with everything else that's popping up on Wednesday nights and so much more. Uh, subscribe to us, Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and, uh, of course, uh, on the YouTube channel. Channel. And please follow Wrestling Mayhem Show at Mayhem Show on the Twitters and Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, and, and everything else. And join us uh, starting starting with a wrestling talk in general, 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com every week. And I realized I forgot to introduce my compatriot here, Eamon Payton. He's the announcer. He's the ringside announcer for uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in San Antonio. No, Austin, Texas. You are currently uh, in... Corpus, you're just all over Texas. I can't keep I'm up with you. I'm all over Texas. I'm all over. I make I make the rounds. You make the rounds, certainly. How are you doing this week, sir? Doing pretty good. Uh, excited to talk about uh, uh, indie wrestling, but also super indie, especially uh, like we like we did last week. Got some uh, fantastic guests on this week, so very very excited. Awesome. Who who we got up first? Well, up first, uh, uh, obviously, super indie is uh, a tournament by IWC that brings in a lot of the best talents from across the country uh, to uh, showcase what they do best. Uh, and this, uh, our first guest this week is definitely an example of that. Uh, he, you may have seen him on Ring of Honor television. You may have seen him in Pro Wrestling Guerrilla uh, or numerous other uh, uh, independent professional wrestling promotions throughout the country. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Mr. Cedric Alexander. Cedric, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic, sir. A little bit sore. Just finished the training session, but feeling pretty good. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I maybe hopefully training up for for uh, Super Indie, which we'll get into a bit. But uh, first, we want to talk uh, sort of about uh, your start and 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 sort of your beginnings. Uh, obviously, uh, everyone we've had on the show gets in professional wrestling for one reason or another. So uh, I guess the best way to start it off is, uh, what's your first ever memory of professional wrestling? My first ever memory of pro wrestling is. Uh, just sitting down in my living room when I was like maybe five or six. Uh, my stepdad was flicking through channels and he stopped on WCW one night. And uh, the match at the time was Juventud Guerrera versus Rey Mysterio. And it blew my mind as a kid watching a bunch of little guys in masks with bright colors flipping and doing all kinds of really fancy stuff. And then from that point on, I was, I was hooked. It was like, it's like my drug. Awesome, definitely. Uh, would you say that that kind of stuff, the WCW Cruiserweight style, sort of influenced uh, your style in professional wrestling a bit? Uh, uh, you definitely have a very uh, uh, fast-paced style, uh, to say the least. Oh, uh, well, of course, definitely. Uh, I was all about WCW Cruiserweights. Uh, I was a diehard WCW fan. WCW went out of business. So, of course, I was always the, the big fan of the lighter guys. Um, I was never quite into the heavyweights. It, 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 it wasn't really my thing. I was always for a more athletic style of wrestling, and that's what drew me in and keeps me as a fan even to this day. Awesome, definitely. Uh, so to go into now sort of your, your start and transition uh, uh, to becoming a professional wrestler, uh, did you did you follow the independent scene at all? And did you know uh, you know that the, you could ever you know get trained to become a professional wrestler? When uh, when was it that you first sort of discovered uh, uh, and, and decided that you wanted to uh, make a make a career out of this? Um, I first became a fan, when, you know, watching WCW. But when I made the conscious decision to be a uh, a pro wrestler, I was watching TNA on Wednesday nights when they had the pay per views. Hmm. And the particular match I remember going, I want to be like these guys, was uh, I think it was the second Ultimate X match they had. It was hmm. Low T, Christopher Daniels, Michael Shane, uh, I think Kazarian and Chris Saban were all in it. And I remember watching that match and just like completely losing my mind on it. And um, at that point, I didn't. It was just early time, and 
uh, Tina had just came on. It was fresh. And hearing about them, and then they would talk about these all the accolades that these guys would do in Japan and England and so on and so forth. It, it made me start investigating more, and that's when I found ROH and found New Japan and et cetera, et cetera. Because before then, I had no clue that there was any other wrestling besides just WWE was doing that. Awesome. And, and I mean, some of those names you mentioned, uh, you've even gotten the chance to, I know, uh, be in the ring with a couple of times. So uh, it must be kind of a cool experience to sort of, you know, look back on that. Um, and and where 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 in particular did you start uh, start uh, wrestling school? Uh, I, I started wrestling uh, here in Charlotte, North Carolina, my hometown, uh, with uh, the High Spots Training Academy under mm-hmm. George South, Cale Conley, and uh, Jake, Jake Manning. They um, all they all had they're all different ways of, of teaching me things. You know, of course, George South being the one of the old Mid Atlantic uh, NWA guys. He um, was, was was very old school about everything he did. So um, I have a, uh, a very, I guess, close grasp on uh, the uh, quote unquote old school way of working. I guess you could say. Definitely. Um, and, uh, and Jake and Caleb being more uh, adept to the new school of wrestling and the strong style and et cetera and et cetera, it really gave me, I guess, a good foundation on finding a, a mid ground between the two. So. Uh, I think you're pretty good in wrestling. <laughs> Definitely. That was can... when I started. Awesome. Cool. And then uh, going into, I, I think the place that most people know you from is, uh, of course, Ring of Honor Wrestling. Uh, and I know you made your start sort of coming up the ranks there, I think around 2010, 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what has it been like sort of working your way up? I know uh, you were a part of uh, CNC Wrestle Factory with Caprice Coleman, and, and now you're starting to do a lot more stuff on your own. And, and I know you've gotten some big matches under your belt uh, uh, there. Uh, what, what do you feel about your progression in, in Ring of Honor so far? I think I'm progressing very well. It's a, I feel it's a slow progression as as opposed to a guy like Adam Cole who has been in maybe – I've been ROH a solid four and a half years. He's been in there maybe five and a half. So mm. I think he's pretty much fast-tracked to the top. I – I believe I'm taking more of a slow burn, which is fine by me. It, 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 it gives me a lot more time to learn and uh, progress and really find myself as a pro wrestler. Um, but, I, but overall, I'm extremely happy with, with my time in ROH right now. Definitely. Uh, if you can think of, of – uh, it can be in ROH or, or anywhere else that you've, you've traveled. Uh, and, as some of uh, – a, a wrestler that sticks out as somebody that you really enjoyed getting the chance to, uh, to wrestle with or, or maybe learn from. Uh, uh, who sticks out sort of in your mind? Man, that's tough. Um, I I can't pick just one, but but I, I would have to say it's Kyle O'Reilly, ACH, and Tommaso Ciampa. Mm. They're three of my favorite opponents, just because they are. I, I think they all bring out something different in me in in, in, in different ways. Like uh, one match that sticks out particularly was when me and Tommaso had a no a nose qualification match in ROH, and then we had a singles match in PWG. Two of my favorite matches last year. Uh, not last year. Yeah, it was last year. Mm-hmm. So um, I think the, those three guys are my top three picks for, for my favorite opponent. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and uh, speaking of Ring of Honor, uh, and I, I did want to mention this. Uh, we had Ray Rowe on last week, uh, obviously, to talk about his stuff in Super Indie as well, but also talk about the, uh, the news that came out around that time, which is uh, Ring of Honor uh, being on Destination America now. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they just recently aired the, uh, the first episode on Destination America this past week. Uh, what do you think about the, uh, the transition? Obviously a big move for, uh, for a company like Ring of Honor. It, it, it caught me completely off guard because we didn't like, like the, the entire locker room knew nothing about it until right when they announced it to everyone on, on social media. So in my mind, I'm like, Oh, well, Okay. <laughs> news. I knew nothing of it, so I was just as shocked as everyone else was. And like people were sending me messages, go, "Hey, why didn't you tell me?" Or like you know, family members, my mom and and parents and uh, or whatever, my, my aunts and uncles were, "Why didn't you tell me you're gonna be on TV? Why didn't Why didn't you say you're gonna be on cable?" And blah blah blah. blah. I was like, "I didn't know it too. You just did." So, <laughs> um, it's it's awesome though. Um, I have a lot of well, it's probably gonna sound weird, but I have a lot of friends that, that actually work for TNA. So like mm-hmm. when they heard about it, they were they were kind of like, "Oh, well, what's what's this about?" I was like, "Bro, I'm just caught up as you are." So, 
it, it, it was, was good. It was, yeah, it was it was a shock in a lot of different ways, both kind of awkward in some ways and still kind of cool. But mm-hmm. you know, just all around the vibes, and I'm I'm still just kind of waiting to see where this goes. Mm-hmm. It's still brand new to me as well. I, I, on that side, uh, as, as a guy working for one of these, does this kind of ignite a bit of a competition? I mean, you guys are kind of butted up against each other on the same network, which is definitely, I, I think, unprecedented in pro wrestling on, on, on television here, especially at this level. Uh, is that? Uh, do you see that kind of competition raising? Maybe, maybe it'll raise the bar for Impact and even you guys to a point. I, of course, like uh, pro wrestling starts on competition, and I feel like mm. once there's a point where there's no competition, then pro wrestling suffers. And now that we have this pretty much head-on competition with TNA, I think it's it's, it's good for both companies. It's going to help us pick our game up, and and it's going to do the same for them. And I think that way everyone makes money. Everyone prospers. Everyone does better because now there's something to compare yourself against, and now you see where your flaws are and where you're strong, where you're strong against, and et cetera, et cetera. So all around, it helps everyone. Side note from that, from uh, you guys getting on this, I don't know if you're familiar with Destination America as a channel and what they've carried on there uh, up until now, aside from pro wrestling. Are you excited for any future crossovers with like the uh, American Barbecue uh, 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 cooking shows or anything else that interesting they got on it? Maybe, uh, maybe Amish <laughs> Ghost Hunters or something? Uh, I think that'd be interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm, I, honestly, I didn't know much about Destination America before this. Uh, I, I was always told it was kind of like the TLC channel or like this discovery or something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Ish. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, it'd be sort of, it'd sort be of. cool. Sort of, yeah. See, yeah. I always hear like, like, like a lot of hunting shows and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I mean, it'd be cool. I mean, I'm not sure exactly where I'll fit in on that, but exactly. It, it just, just for a, a comparison point, I just went to their YouTube channel just to kind of see what they have going on. Uh, Mount, uh, mountain monster hunters is the first show that comes up. Uh, on our YouTube channel, so so I I, I look forward to the part because yeah, I remember they had what Kofi Kingston on uh on on Ghost Hunters one time, right? On Sci Fi, so the, the possibilities are endless. Huh? That'd be cool because I'm into like the weird cryptid, you know, the the Loch Ness monster, this kind of stuff. So that'd be kind of cool. Sure, why not? Awesome, awesome. So, uh, Amen. Sorry, you, you got anything? Uh, I I kind of want to go uh sort of now into uh, uh super indie uh. Obviously, you'll be facing. Uh, we know you'll be facing Sugar Dunkerton, who we'll be having on later tonight uh, in the first round of that tournament. Um, uh, sort of, I, I don't know if you got the chance to look at the the, the field of competitors for that. Uh, is there anyone that sort of sticks out to you as somebody you'd like to face? I know uh, Ray definitely mentioned you uh, as far as names that he would like to face in the tournament because I don't think you two have ever met. But uh, uh, does anyone in particular stick out to you? Uh, Ray Rowe definitely because um, actually me and him are actually pretty good friends. Um, outside of the, the ring, you know, just just in general, he's he's a real cool dude. So I think me and him will be an excellent matchup. Um, there's another guy. I I I remember his face, but I can't remember his name. Alex Daniels, right? Yes. If I remember correctly. Yeah, I saw him at AIW a couple weeks ago. That guy's great. I I think me and him will be a great matchup. Um, obviously, I wouldn't mind getting ring in with Andrew Everett or Trevor Lee again. I've wrestled those guys. Tons and tons of times. We, 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 we all came up in North Carolina together, so uh, that'd be awesome, of course. But um, those, those are the three guys that really stick out to me. Um, I don't really know a whole bunch of those guys, but I've, I've researched them a little bit and you know looked on YouTube. But uh, my top person that I want that I like to wrestle uh, will, will probably be Ray Rowe, of course. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Hopefully we'll, we'll get to see that. Uh, if the if uh, things uh, aim out for both of you too, mm-hmm. um, when it comes or, to uh, sort- yeah, when it comes to a tournament like this, when, have you had a lot of experience in uh, these you know kind of indie big tournaments like this? And uh, anything anything you look forward to, you know, I mean, this could be a night where you're you're working uh, in this format, maybe up to three times that night. Uh, you know, wh- what what are you doing on your side to kind of uh, uh, stick out in a, in an environment like this? You, you, uh, to stick out, you said? Yeah. Um, man, honestly, I just go out there and do my thing at, um, each and every match. Um, it wasn't until, like, last year when I started doing more uh, more of these tournaments. Like, uh, I did the 16 carat uh, uh, earlier this year, and I also did uh, Bola last year, and did um, a couple other high-profile tournaments, like, like in the regional areas, whatever. And done fairly well in them 
But I mean, for me, it's it's more so just go out there and do what I and just do what I know. I I, I don't really think of it as trying to stand out. I I. Like I was going to say, they're 230 pounds and can move like I do. So mm-hmm. I think just just me doing what I do regularly just you know just kind of helps to self. Certainly, awesome, definitely. Well, uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, things will turn out well, and who knows, we could have a new uh, Super Indy champion in uh, Cedric Alexander after this weekend. Um, oh, I can, but, uh, I can almost guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, going into some of our other regular questions uh, that we tend to ask, uh, uh, one that we've been asking a lot is, uh, uh, what are you watching currently, either for uh, uh, wrestling-wise, uh, either for recreation or setting purposes? Is there anything that you uh, have your eye on recently? As far as, as far as you kind of broke up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you broke up. Basically, he's asking, oh, what, are you, what are you watching lately as far as other wrestling? Oh, as far as the wrestling, oh, uh, definitely New Japan. Uh, I've uh, tried to keep a close close eye on uh, the, uh, the the best of Super Juniors. Um, but want a lot more of uh, more of the Midwestern stuff, like um, AAW, et cetera, et cetera. Dream Wave. I've been trying to get my hands on just about everything stuff that I usually don't watch because I can't get my hands on. And now I'm making more of an effort to to watch more of these higher profile indies just to get a grasp on. Who, you know who's who's out there now because a lot of guys I don't know that are mm-hmm. popping up out of nowhere. They're like, "Oh, this guy's great. This guy's great." And I was like, "I've never heard of these people." So now I feel like I'm kind of out of touch. And now that I've been with ROH so long, I, I I mainly just stick with, okay, I watch ROH stuff. I watch TNA, WWE, New Japan, and that's usually it. Now I gotta start watching more more indies to get more of a grasp on who's out there because if I don't, I'm gonna get caught one day and <laughs> not know anything. Certainly. Awesome, definitely. Uh, and, and I guess the final question that we have uh, that we uh, ask all of our guests, uh, obviously, uh, this being a podcast about independent wrestling, and, and uh, they tend to answer it in a lot of different ways. Uh, but uh, my question is, uh, what is your, the, in your opinion, the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? The best and worst thing? Yes. <sighs> Man, um, I would say the best and worst thing is that everybody's a star. And and when I say that, I mean, everywhere you look, there's always some guy standing out and he's the, the biggest guy in that region or he's like the next breakout star, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a lot of that these days. And not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but in the sense of when it's time for these guys to get big contracts and stuff like that, there's so many of them that some of them get lost. And, you know, uh, Often a shuffle just forgotten about. Mm. Like, um, I guess a good example would be in WWE, where all these top indie guys are getting signed, which is great. But when you look at the guys who've been in NXT for three, four, five years and get then get overlooked when Finn Balor comes in or Kevin Owens comes in, their talent is now lost in the shuffle because all these top indie names have come in and taken their spots. Definitely. Isn't that an interesting turnaround, though? That now we they have to worry about the top indie guys taking poor, poor, talented wrestler spots now. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be the football player that they taught how to wrestle in six months, right? Yeah, the, the football players are supermodels, or yeah, the guy or like the, the the chick who just came fresh out of Hooters. This is this is kind of like the first world wrestling problem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, the first in a while, actually. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Nice problem to have, but yeah. Um, I guess it is sort of best and worst. That's a good way to to, to kind of put it. Awesome. Um, and and uh, so thank you very much, Cedric, for uh, coming on and talking with us about uh, your career and and obviously the stuff you got coming up. Um, obviously, super neat. Uh, you'll be at. But uh, if there's any other events that you will be attending uh, that you want people to check you out at, uh, or if you have anything on, on social media, people where people can find you, uh, feel free to uh, to plug away. All right, of course, you know, I'm on uh, Facebook, such a guy, Alexander. You may find 7,000 of those, but I am the one with the Mohawk, of course. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, you know, Twitter, uh, such a guy, Alexander. Instagram, such a guy, Alexander. One, um, I'll be, of course, IWC this, this weekend. I'll be in PWX in Winston-Salem, North Carolina the following day. Then I'll be in New York for uh, Best in the World with uh, ROH. And then after that, I have to look at my date, but I'm not sure what it is after that. And, and Best in the World is actually on, on general pay-per-view, right? 
Uh, I think that's eye pay per view. Is it eye pay per view? Okay. I I believe so. Okay. Awesome. But yeah, definitely. I'm uh, I'm all over the world, people. You just gotta look me up. <laughs> I'm mean, I'm sure you know anywhere anyone anywhere anyone's listening. They they may they definitely can find a show with Cedric Alexander on it. It seems. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Cedric, for coming on and. Uh, 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 Sorg, uh, I think we're uh, going to get ready to talk to our, our next guest, uh, Cedric's opponent, uh, uh, in a little bit. Yes. Yeah, give oh. Sugar in a hard time. Me and him go way, way back. You he call us the, <laughs> actually, if you want, he would call us the Chocolate Express. <laughs> oh, really? You know, actually, we didn't touch on that. So, if you got another minute here, uh, can, can, can we touch on that? What, what is this history between you and Sugar? Me and Sugar used to ride up and down the East Coast almost every other weekend to go to shows. And we would uh, ride together and share stories and stuff like that. And we even tagged a few times. And uh, we called ourselves the Chocolate Express. Ask him about that. But oh, like, but like that, but that was way back when, when I was in the new, the new face in wrestling. And I didn't really uh, have a have any buzz going about me. I was maybe a year and a half in at most. So um, he was really one of the guys that kind of took me under. And I was like, Hey, let's, hey kid, let's go hop in the car with me. Let's go to this place and make stuff happen. And um, me and Sugar have been cool ever since then. He's 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 my my number one. Awesome, man. He's he's definitely so. It'll be interesting to see uh, you guys uh, knowing each other pretty well uh, going into the first round of the tournament. Yeah, we've been clotheslining each other all day. That's kind of our thing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, it'd be, awesome. Uh, it'd be very it'd be very Larry heavy in that match. Larry heavy. Very Larry heavy. Awesome, awesome. I, I can't wait to check that out from behind the monitor. So, all right. Thank you, Secretary Kyle Alexander from Ring of Honor. Check him out, Destination America, or come in your town according to that schedule. So, and uh, we'll uh, check out our next guest. Thanks, Sorg. Yeah, it's time to talk uh, uh, with our second guest for this evening. A uh, big two for here tonight, obviously. Uh, talking about Super Indie, we just had Cedric Alexander, so I thought it'd be uh, appropriate enough to talk to Cedric Alexander's uh, opponent in the first round of the Super Indie tournament this weekend. Uh, joining us on the line at this time is the one and only Sugar Dunkerton. Sugar, how are you this evening? Hola, I am fine. Thank you. I, 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 I bi bilingual as well. Very, 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 uh, very nice to see. Um, very little bilingual. Very little bilingual. <laughs> Awesome, but uh, uh, let, let's dive right into this. Uh, uh, sort of a uh, with an icebreaker question of sorts uh, uh, to talk about. Uh, obviously, you're starting professional wrestling, but uh, uh, to let these fans know, uh, what was your first ever memory of uh, professional wrestling? Uh, um, WrestleMania five, like uh, Hulk Hogan's like celebration at the end when he beat Macho Man Randy Savage. Um, I had an old VHS of uh, that and. That's probably like the most rewound moment of anything I've ever watched, even as a grown man. Like I could do his whole celebration from that pay per view specifically, uh, like like cold copy. Like if I had to, like <laughs> if somebody had a gun to my head and said, "Do the entire full thing, like the full ending celebration of Hulk Hogan's victory in WrestleMania Five over Macho Man Randy Savage," I would live. I would live because I can do it front to back. Yes. Awesome. I know that's definitely a uh, cool, cool trait to have in the back pocket. So this is this Almost is definitely. I, I think I can relate to this. Eamon doesn't know this. Eamon's far too young to know this this magical era that that you and I apparently came up in. Like like you're one that we watched the pay per views and we we got like the ten minute Hulk Hogan celebration. Like that's what we but we watched that tape for in the long run. Oh, Am I right? Oh, Am I right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is Eamon one of those guys that thought that uh, wrestling came along one day when this guy named Stone Cold Steve Austin said, uh, you know, Austin three sixteen. <laughs> Says I kicked your ass. Uh, actually, no, actually, you, was born. actually you'll, you'll be was born. sad to you'll be sad to know it was much later than that. Yeah, yeah. Amen. No, no. Because there's always okay. It's either like it's okay. There's there's like three versions of wrestling. Either you came in, you came in around like no, seriously. There's three types of fans. Either you came in around 2001, like when when Rock was going Hollywood. You came in on 90, 1996 when Austin was on the come up. Or you just watched everything. Like, if you were pre-96, 
you know about Hacker Schmidt and Gats and all of them. Like you know, you know everything. <laughs> you watched it all. That's what it is. That's why I get around here I in, P- in it, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Whenever I bring up pro wrestling, if they grew up in Pittsburgh, I hear about Jumpin' Johnny DeFazio and Studio Wrestling. It's uh, that's it's incredible. No, I'm definitely yeah. If you know what Studio Wrestling is, you're right. Then like yeah, you you you're you're hardcore. You're about this. You're about that see, life. See, but, yeah. see, I was siloed without cable, so all I knew were the WWF VHSs I, I rented ad nauseum from my local provider and the sa- Saturday morning show. That's it. Period. Hey, Coliseum Video was where it was at, That's man. right. That All stuff. about the Coliseum Videos. Stuff. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Eamon. Yeah, Eamon is actually going back and re-experiencing the attitude area that he missed. That's and true. That has been that, a very interesting okay. experiment. It's gr- it's grossly overhyped. It'll oh, yeah. be okay. Like like you'll enjoy it. you'll enjoy it. Like there's plenty of shock value, but it's it's grossly overhyped. Like the the match quality is the match the quality of matches is severely better pre and post attitude era, but it's the moments that make the attitude era. So yeah. I, I would agree with that. I, I, I yeah. definitely see that. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Transitioning into uh, your first time watching professional wrestling, to uh, getting into it, uh, what kind of inspired you, or what what sort of showed you that hey, I could do this for a living? Uh, what, what what did you know about indie wrestling? Uh, you know dude, to, dude, you know, dude living school? is a stretch. Living <laughs> you is know, a stretch. You know. <laughs> yeah, you know, living is a yeah, let me break even. Let me break even first, and we'll talk living. You know, but like <laughs> okay, right, right yeah. now, right now, I'm I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm I'm hustling. I'm doing it. Um. The thing, uh, the thing of it is, is just even at that young age, I knew at some point I was gonna take some part in the whole wrestling thing. It's like I didn't know how it was gonna happen, but I just knew it was always gonna be like a very large part of who I was and what I would become. And uh, yeah, you know, like I, I just knew there was no escaping it. And um, I used to read about independent wrestling, uh, uh, independent wrestling via like the World of Wrestling mag and the PWI inside of Fakeville after. And uh, that's how I even found out that world existed. So um, I just kept reading up on that kind of stuff, and, you know, doors opened themselves and presented themselves, and then here I am, like, doing what it is that I do. And uh, it's it's a bit of a stretch. I just never imagined I'd be at it, and I never imagined I'd be at it this long. So, yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Awesome. Definitely. Uh Going into, um, uh, I, I think for po- most people that are listening to the show, uh, the most people know you from uh, uh, your days days as a basketball player. Now, I, I did look it up, and, and you actually did Fair. start as a, uh, uh, I believe your uh, your name was Kareem Abdul Jabbar, if I'm not mistaken, or some variation. Jabbar would Kareem Abdul Jabbar would be the 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 original, like uh, also known as Lou Alcindor. He was uh, the great the great basketball player. Who, whose name I ripped off for that? <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't Jabbar. Like uh, it was Jamar. Jamar is like my. Oh, okay. uh, I guess. I guess we're throwing around insider terms. So that's my <laughs> shoot middle name. Like so. Like so. Yeah. So we just went ahead and ran that. So yeah. Awesome. Good. And then was there was there a particular reason? Was was this something that somebody sort of suggested to you uh, to do this? Just through Inferno. Just through Inferno, really? actually. Uh, like I was, I, I started getting behind doing the character at a great championship wrestling and, um, it still didn't have a name. So Disco Inferno just popped through one time and I thought it was pretty cool. Cause you know, he was, he's, he's one of the great gimmick men and I can respect a good gimmick man. So like, um, I just thought it was cool that he was even interested. So I told him I was doing a basketball gimmick and he's like, wow. So he's literally, he's literally snatched the basketball out of my hand. And he's dribbling around and he's doing trick stuff and everything the whole time while he's having a conversation with me because apparently he used to play basketball. So it was, you know, good fun. And I was like, you know, I still don't have a name for it yet, sir. And he's like, oh, well. And it took him like five seconds and he came up with, like, the name. And I was like, oh, wow, that's – wow. Like, I feel – I feel uh, – well, the word I was looking for – it's, it's moments like that that you realize why they're the vet and you're the rook. Like, mm-hmm. and no matter how much you learn – they're always going to be the vet. So, yeah, it was just a moment like that because I was racking my brain for like two weeks and he walks in and plays with a basketball and he's multitasking and comes up with a name in like five seconds. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, That's why he got the Turner Bucks. That's why he got the Turner Bucks. <laughs> we're, we're having a question in the chat room from our friend Antonio Garza down there in Texas as well. He says, uh, I wanted to ask you about the nickname Mr. Too Many Nicknames. Ah! Ah! <laughs> 
Oh, the chat room. Okay, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great chat room. <laughs> man, that's where you catch it. That's 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 where the heat. That's where the real juice is at. The chat room. Um, Mister Too Many Nicknames comes from the fact that I have too many nicknames. Oh, um, <laughs> I, I um, I always wanted to do like Apollo Creed. And they had that obnoxiously long nickname session, like when he was like waiting to get killed by Ivan Drago in the yeah, fourth movie. Yeah. So it took like longer to do his ring introduction than like the actual fight went. So um, I purposely come up with numerous nicknames to add to uh, my repertoire of nicknames. So um, I, I want to say I'm somewhere at around fifty. And I just want to have like that one. Yeah, yeah. But they all work. They all work. Like I always, I always tell them with love. And um, I, I just want to have that one moment where I have the brave enough ring enough. Actually, it did happen. Um, Jason Altraz at a Heroes and Legends show. It was Heroes and Legends. I want to say four. Actually, took it upon himself to go look at my cage match profile. <laughs> and write down every nickname that was there and proceeded to do every nickname I had during my entrance. And um, unfortunately, I have yet to have video evidence of that. But I respect him to no end. If he needed a kidney, I'm not saying he would have it, but I would seriously consider it. Awesome. I mean, I mean that's, a, that's a big feat, definitely. Uh, yeah. To, to get through uh but yeah um uh obviously uh so the gimmick that you had at the time your, your basketball gimmick uh did Chikara sort of just discover you at that point and and bring you in uh through there and and obviously from that point you uh, went from Kareem Abdul Jamar to uh, uh Sugar Dunkerton uh, uh what was that transition kind of like it's actually a pretty funny story of persistence um I said okay I'm not suggesting everybody do this if that's where you want to get into something. But um, I've been on like a big honesty kick lately, so I'm going to keep it 100, as they say. Definitely. Um, it, it grates my nerves when you have very respected vets who always talk about if you want something, never give up on it and be persistent. And then the culture of promoters, it seems, and bookers as of late, is that if you are persistent, and not in an annoying way, like not trying to be annoying, but if you are persistent, if you do check in, if you do send your stuff in, and you don't exactly get a response right away, or you don't get a response, period, after waiting a good amount of time, that you keep sending stuff in. They want to call you annoying. They want to call you, uh, why are you wasting my time? I'm wasting my time because you can't man up to give me an answer and say, A, you can't use me, B, we don't have a use for you, or C, we're just not interested, or D, we're just not interested at this time. Do you realize how much junk mail you would save yourself if you <laughs> would just man up and just say that, like, we have no use for you? Like, it, it drives me crazy, like, just period, in, the, in, in life and in the wrestling business, that everybody would rather just ignore stuff instead of just going ahead and facing up to it and just saying, hey, this is what it is, instead of just not answering. Non-answers drive me up a wall. I would rather sit on like a cactus for an elongated period of time than get a non-answer about something where an answer would have done the trick. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, I proceeded to bother Mike Quackenbush, I suppose. Um, I sent him a demo DVD every week for 10 weeks. Every week without fail. So finally he sends me an email. That's all I needed was an answer. He sends <laughs> me an email back and he says, if I agree to watch this and critique this DVD, will you please stop sending me DVDs? Sure. That's all I wanted. That could have been the case at the second DVD. But, you know, me being persistent. So um, he actually watched it. He did like what he saw. Um, the bas He did like the basketball thing. And at the time, he's like, hey, there's this uh, character that, you know, we're, we're testing out. Uh, Dasher Hatfield, you might have heard of him. And it's like, uh, we just think this might be a good parent. It's, it's a shame that you live in Georgia because I would love to have you come up and do some shows. So he proceeds to underestimate the fact that I really don't have anything going on at the moment. So I'm <laughs> like, hey, if, if I need to make the drive to get up there, 
then that's just what I'm going to do. And he's like, are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. I'm sure as the day is long and I'm sure as my skin is dark, I will be there. And uh, the rest was history. And um, that said, uh, Dasher Hatfield, uh, just, just to throw that out there, uh, he's one of my favorite, 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 favorite. I said this on another podcast. I'll say it again. Favorite, favorite, favorite people. I love anytime anything good happens to him. So, yeah. I, I've actually got the, the pleasure to work with him at Inspire Pro Wrestling, and I would agree with that. Fan, really fantastic guy. Uh, uh, and now, so you, were you was that a regular thing you were doing? You were making the trips up from from Georgia to uh, to wherever Chikara was at the time? Or, or did you eventually uh, uh, move ship or – and um, I want you. I want you guys to think about that. Think of everywhere Chikara was touching at the time. Yeah. At every show that I was at, that, I did that's, all those. I did all those drives. All that, that's those. really impressive. I gotta say, because I, I sometimes I did them with other people. Sometimes not so much, but I, I did all those drives. And, and is there? I mean, we kind of talked earlier about like sort of uh, you know the life of an indie wrestler or whatever. Is there a mentality that goes into that of, of yeah, I'll, you know, I'll do those drives or, 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 or is it just, I, I, I don't know, does, was that something that's just naturally you, kind of you about your persistence about being like, yeah, I'll definitely do it? Well, um, it's one of those cases where I got to give a shout out to Jimmy Rave. Like, um, I don't know, I may not be Jimmy Rave's favorite person or anything to that effect. Um, I've always had like a great respect for him. And, um, the thing about Jimmy was when he was starting to come up, there were a lot of guys around the Georgia scene who were very talented, but they didn't want to put in the miles. They mm-hmm. figured, oh, well, if somebody wants to book me, they'll come ask for me. Doesn't work like that. Sometimes you do have to put yourself out there and you do have to ask yourself, how far am I willing to go to be able to go a little bit further? So um, he made those drives. He ran those roads. And um, Jimmy made a hell of a career for himself. I was always inspired by that. And granted, he caught a lot of hate back in Georgia about it. Like, oh, who does Jimmy think he is? Who is Jimmy doing this and all this other stuff? He thinks he's better than us. Well, it wasn't Jimmy thinking who he thinks he is. It was Jimmy going out there and working AJ Styles at Ring of Honor. It was Jimmy going out and doing TNA and making big things happen for himself. Jimmy working CZW. He doesn't really have time to listen to what you've got to say because he's doing bigger bookings right now. Mm -hmm. So that's the mentality you kind of have to have for yourself. And I caught a little bit of that too. I kind of still catch some of that from time to time, but it is what it is. Um, if you really want to make something happen, sometimes you just got to go out there on a limb. You, you have to take those miles. Like that's not something, that's not something that you take lightly. Like if, if you want to make a big splash, you, you, you have to be well, you have to be willing to do that. You have to take a loss sometimes. Sometimes, you have to be willing to accept the fact I'm going to sleep in this car tonight. There's going to be situations where it's like, I'm going to drive to this show. I'm going to like, perfect example. I did an infinity pro show a few years back. That was a 12 hour drive to Indiana. Um, I did a tournament. I did three matches. So that was four showers because after every match I showered because I have respect for my opponent and respect for myself. I want to be clean. (laughs) Um, and then I proceeded after losing in the semifinal round to take my last shower for the evening. Um, slight break, uh, got back in the car, drove back another 12 hours, um, worked my regular job for eight hours. Then I fell asleep. Those are the sacrifices sometimes that you have to make. And they sound crazy, but they're plausible. It has to be done if you want something that badly. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's really spectacular though. Um, and and that's a lot of also like some stuff I overhear sometimes like being in Texas. That's a lot of about people having to get out and travel and and stuff like that. That's yeah, that's man. definitely. And then I I guess you know that applies everywhere. Um, so you've uh, traveled uh, a lot uh, the uh, American scene, obviously. Uh, besides even Chikara, you you've worked. Um, obviously, you're a big part of uh, Beyond Wrestling. I know. Uh, you're also mm-hmm. uh, did a lot of Resistance Pro Wrestling. Uh, uh, did some did some different stuff there. Uh, what what has been some of your favorite experiences in in, in indie wrestling? Well, it's always the stuff where I feel like people feel me, and um, especially lately, it's been very rewarding because um, I feel like I've been able to speak with my own voice and kind of uh, do me. 
for the first time in a long time. So there's been like a lot of personal things that kind of bleed over. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I would like to think you guys have seen my promos, and if not, you know, there's always YouTube. You can check mm-hmm. them out. But um, lately, you know, I, I like to consider myself a very funny guy, a very happy guy. But um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff behind me. There's a lot of layers behind me. There's a lot of uh, determination and sometimes angry passion behind what I do. And um, I don't mind being emotional about who I am. So anytime I'm able to go ahead and share that with the people, that always resonates with me because um, anybody can go out there, have a match. And I, and there's a lot of that. People go out there, they have these amazing matches. And um, everybody likes to talk about how wrestling, is, they compare it to film. You know, the big thing is everybody likes to talk about how fake wrestling is, but nobody talks about how fake the transporter or uh the hunger games or the avengers is like they just want to get lost in it right so there's a difference between when you go to see like an action movie and it's just an action movie it is what it is you forget it after it's happened it's like a fast food movie like okay there was some cool stuff my life goes on Mm -hmm. then there's movies that you catch sometimes that affect you in like a very personal way of silver line it's playbook uh, I'm trying to think of some stuff off the top of my head that always gets to me, like Silver Linus Playbook or 2046, even Kung Fu Hustle, like um, which I'm very, very, I very, very, very much love that movie. Has a heart to it that really uh, affected me after I saw that, and you don't forget it. Like that stuff resonates with you after the fact. And there's a lot of people putting on a lot of matches to, you know, we're supposed to be comparing this to art. A lot of people are putting out matches that are great for what they are, and then you'll never remember them again. Or somebody's mm-hmm. going to have to remind you of it. There are things that have happened lately that I know people are not going to forget about, or they're going to remember where they were at, or they're going to remember how they felt. And if they feel you, you live forever. And that's my whole purpose. Like, I don't care if they never remember a match that I've ever did in my life. I want them to remember that they felt me. And if they feel me, cool. I will never die. So when I have stuff like uh, being able to share like my first like big title win at Resistance with uh, Kevin, who has Down Syndrome, but he would never know for a fact that he has Down Syndrome. Like He still acts like everything is normal, and he is, because he is normal to himself. That's what counts. Um... Like being able to stand toe to toe with Chris Hero and him shaking my hand and giving me the hug, like the respect, like the nod that I've been wanting for so long that I, I feel like I still chase after. Like little stuff like that, that stuff gets to me because I know it got to other people too. And that's all I ever try to work for, ever, whenever I do anything. So that's especially true in wrestling. Yeah. And no, that's something that really caught some people by surprise because your your video was uh, uh, debuted at uh, the last IWC show, and, and and it's up on the internet, of course. <laughs> and I understand, you know, it was. I think it threw it for the loop. I think it threw it for a loop. They they did not did. get what was advertised. It did. It did. <laughs> and I know you came back with a video, and and I remember getting a message. Uh, the webmaster actually put that video together, and it was like, does he have heat with you? What's going on here? Can you explain a little bit? There, uh, there's no heat. There's no heat. <laughs> so um, um, the promoter at IWC mentioned that there is no heat whatsoever. He was going off of footage that he had, and I'm not mad at that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I'm still a fun guy. I'm still a fun guy. <laughs> I'm just a. I'm a fun guy that's just very violent these days, and I'm ve- and I'm ve- I'm more determined these days. So it's cool. It's like you know, I think we were kind of expecting like Brave and the Bold Batman, mm. and we kind of got Watchmen instead. So <laughs> you know, like it, it, it's cool. It's cool. So, so the so comedian was funny, kind of. That's right. That's right. The Joker was funny in his own way, and in, in uh, Dark Knight, yeah. right? So, but yeah, and then yeah. a pimple go through a guy's head. Yeah, you know. You know. So that's, that's how it goes, it's a fun you know? trick. It's a fun trick. And, and that that yeah. was, you know, I mean, that's what I thought. You know, I've seen you a few years ago in Chikara out there in Philadelphia for King of Trios, and uh, and 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 I was like, oh, cool. You know, I remember this guy. But knowing how much has changed, uh, uh, talking with you here and seeing the videos that have come out since, it's, it's very interesting. Very different than what 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 we've got previewed there. Uh, 
uh, last month there at IWC. So, um, but uh, well, your first uh, your first round opponent here. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we we went on air. Uh, is uh, Cedric yeah. Alexander? We just talked to uh, previously on here, and uh, mm -hmm. apparently you guys have some history. He said that we need to ask <laughs> you about. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> uh, like if you saw the recent promo that I cut. Mm -hmm. I, there is there is never going to be a personal issue between me and Cedric because I think the world of him, um, he worked his ass off to be where he's at. And um, I respect that. And it takes a lot. And I think, uh, you know, it takes humility and modesty to say that, like, I mean, he surpassed anything that I've done. He, surpa he surpassed anything that I think people had expectations of him doing. I always knew that he had the skill set and the talent. It was just a matter of if that was ever going to come out. And we know guys like that in wrestling. It's like they have the skill set. It's just something never happens or nothing clicked or they didn't know the right person or they didn't have the right match or whatever. And it just worked out for him. And um, a lot of things worked out for him. And, um, yeah, initially when he was trying to cut his teeth, I mean, the first time I ever met him, um, we wrestled at uh, – we wrestled at – uh, Rampage Pro Wrestling in Georgia. So we have a match in the books together. And we're both completely different wrestlers since then. Um, wow. It would be like, it wouldn't even be the same match looking back at the one that we had before. I mean, it's on YouTube even. You can go check it out. Um, it, was, it was a fun match. I really enjoyed it. Um, and we did ride a few rows together. Like, uh, we went up north a few times. Uh, we were the greatest... I will say this. I will say this as well, too. And I will go on record, and anybody can argue it. I don't care. We were the greatest tag team to have less than five matches. Okay? <laughs> less than five matches together, greatest tag team. Okay? I'll put that on anything. Okay? Anything. I am a little gone off of Simply Orange Orange Juice right now, so it may be a vitamin C high why I'm saying this, but I don't care. I don't care. We were the greatest tag team to have less than five matches ever. I'll put that on anything. Um, <laughs> we were known as the Chocolate Express. Uh, we we mostly ran in uh, Force One Wrestling. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It was just uh, I enjoyed tagging with them because it was two guys that were cool with each other. Um, and we made a lot of $5 wrestling in jokes. Like, like uh, That's all our promos were. Well, like five dollar wrestling in jokes. Like we would make dynamite jokes, we would make freight train <laughs> jokes, we would say random stuff. Like um our 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 whole outro was like kaboom. You know, the whole dynamite kaboom thing from the uh promo it was it, it was just fun to do. Plus it got him out of his shell like cutting promos. And then um, you know, like schedules changed and we didn't go quite get to catch up like that. And we still catch up from time to time and everything like that, but um I'm proud of everything that he's done and I'm super excited to be wrestling him in the tournament. Um, I won't allude to the fact that uh, indie wrestling stereotype has kind of come up. How if there's more than one black person that we're either teaming or <laughs> fighting each other. So I won't bring up, I won't bring up the black bracket. I won't bring up the black bracket. <laughs> Look at you, Justin. Palmer. However, <laughs> <laughs> however, 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 I know it's going to be an awesome match, and um, no disrespect to Cedric. He's made a lot of awesome things happen for himself. This is going to be my awesome moment, so that means I have to go through him, and it's going to be an awesome match, but I am in no doubt who wins. I am in no doubt. Awesome, and of course, a win with that, uh, uh, Ray Rowe is a possibility there for you. Okay. Raymond Rowe. Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> Dude is big. No, no, seriously. Seriously. Dude is big. Recently came off of the AIW JT Lightning tournament. Like, mm -hmm. I, I pay attention to everything. Like, I'm still a fan. I hate the wrestlers who sit down there who talk about, like, they don't watch other people's stuff. I don't watch this. I don't care about what other people got going on. It's like being a stockbroker and never paying attention to Wall Street. You have to know what's going on with everything so that you know what your product is, what you should be doing, what's hot, what's not. Raymond Roll is doing big things right now. He came off of a really bad injury, came back to win the AIWJT Lightning Tournament, tearing things up at ROH right now with his boy Hanson. Um, he even stomped through beyond recently, you know? Like, um, I have all the respect in the world for him. At the same time, 
I cannot let anything get in the way of what it is that I am trying to accomplish. I am a fun guy, but I'm also a very driven person. I've looked at what indie wrestling has become. Like, I refuse to buy into the perception that the face of indie wrestling has to be somebody that wears kick pads, that wears biker shorts. I don't believe in this, like, the designation of this guy is indie wrestling. I don't. I believe that at any given time, it could be anybody. It could be anything. It should be about who the people feel. Raymond Rowe, he's awesome. Great talent. Big. You can't throw around something you can't catch, though. And the thing is, I know that he's a very talented guy, but at the same time, if he's put in front of me, it's up to me to beat him. Have to. Because if he loses, awesome. Like, it's the same thing with Cedric. If Cedric loses, awesome. He'll have a PWG booking. He will have an ROH booking. He will have all that great stuff waiting on him when it's over. If Hanson loses, excuse me, not Hanson, Raymond Rowe. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to mess you too. One's got a beard. One's got the hair. That's a different stuff. Um... <laughs> But, bro, if he loses, he's back to ROH, Destination America every Wednesday. Everything's cool. Life is good. Myself, I, I'm not in a position where I'm making super indie moves or anything like that right now. Like, people thought I died off when, like, I, I wasn't working Shakara anymore. I took that a little personal. And I also take it a little personal sometimes that, uh, although me being a funny guy, I I think people they're coming around to it. I think the Midwest more so, but I think people lose, lose faith or, or have no faith in the fact that I can go in the ring and the fact that I can carry something. So this isn't just like a match or a tournament or a booking for me. This is like a moment, a movement. What I stand for speaks for itself. If I lose, I'm losing for the people that are determined that want to change things that want to be able to do something a little bit different, that don't want to go against the grain. I don't want to go with the flow. I want to be the flow. I want to be the flow. So that means I got to beat these guys that nobody gives me a chance against. Wow. High stakes here for Super Indy. That's awesome. Well, we got a couple of questions here uh, to, to end out on, uh, Eamon, right? Yes, do indeed. Uh, uh, yeah, little, little, these are a couple of sort of our, our regular questions that we ask uh, all of our guests. Uh, the first sure. being, uh, the first being, uh, what are you watching currently, uh, either uh, wrestling wise, but either uh, recreation or just uh, for studying purposes? Is there anything uh, that's caught your attention? Oh, um, are you? Are we talking wrestling, or are we talking about just watching in general? <laughs> wrestling. We we we. Well, I, I wouldn't mind extending it. You know. Okay, fine. I'll I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, I, I'm sorry. I got a little pa- I tend to do that. I get a little passionate about stuff. That's, that's fine. That's great. I, I'm, and I'm unapolog <laughs> and I'm unapologetic about it. That's what um, that's what these podcasts are for. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, man. I'm 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 hyped about this. Like I'm I'm excited about this. I'm not treating it like another boogie. Like this is this is huge for me. I I got something big the night before too. But like I got to do this. This is gonna be great. Um, wrestling wise, I've actually uh you know nine ninety nine. It's a, it's a great value. The WWE Network is always <laughs> awesome. Um, I love watching. I love watching NXT. It's probably one of the best. It's probably one of the best wrestling related products. That's very simple, easy to follow, and um, it's just fun. It's just fun to watch it. Um, I've actually am enjoying a lot of NXT, and um, I've recently gotten back into New Japan again, especially with them getting very, uh, very, very hot again. I think it's safe to say. And um, I, I'm really enjoying a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing over there, especially because my um, style's been altering a little bit. Um, as far as, like, stuff that I just like to watch in general, um, believe it or not, I watch a ton of Adventure Time. I've probably <laughs> rewatched. I'm, 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 I'm not even playing with you. I got, like, all the seasons, DVDs, like, right in front of me. Same thing with regular show. I've probably rewatched. I've rewatched regular show millions and millions of times it is my style of comedy it is everything that i love about comedy and animation and um as of late aside from um aside from like the uh like i'm a i'm a big film connoisseur lately it's been a lot of the old school shaw brother 
kung fu flicks, you know, the ones with the bad dubbing. Um, mm. I've been watching a ton of, you know, your style is better than mine, and they're still talking and whatnot. Um, but, like, I've been watching a ton of that. Like, um, it's actually pretty inspirational. I've come up with some really abstract, like, uh, moves to use in the ring watching it. So, yeah. Nice. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the final question we tend to ask everyone, and, and this can definitely be taken in any direction, so feel free. Uh, <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> is, is overall, uh, what is, in your opinion, the best and worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, God. Oh, man, you may have... Uh... <laughs> You may have screwed your podcast on this one. <laughs> we have um, a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me get the bad stuff out the way first. I love to get the bad stuff out the way. No the problem. worst thing about it, the worst thing about independent wrestling. Um, it's a twofold question. Um, the worst thing about independent wrestling to me, you can give up so very much. And sacrifice so 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 much because I think about all the the weekends, the plans I've had to break, relationships that I've had to uh, abandon, uh, birthdays I couldn't be to. I wasn't there for my own high school graduation or my college graduation because I had to take a booking. Um, so many times I've had to, God, just. So many times I've had to just discard anything that meant anything on a personal level outside of wrestling because it was either them or wrestling. And then you do these things and then you get in situations where um, you have people who don't have your best interest at heart or don't care about your hard work or don't care about how you're breaking your body for yourself or don't care about how far you're coming from or um, don't really care about you sometimes. And, um, you know, the further that, it's like sometimes they can make you feel easily replaceable or they can act like your dream is nothing. Like if you're not important to them, they can just act like everything that you sacrifice and the fact that you want it can mean absolutely nothing to them. And they have all the power in the world sometimes to be able to make a dream come true for you. And um, can we cuss on this? Yes, indeed. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, this will probably be the hardest curse, the hardest cursing I'll do for this. I just, I feel a certain kind of way, so I guess I got to let that go. <laughs> um, they have everything in their power in a lot of cases, if you're, if you're giving to be able to make something happen for you and they could give two shits, they don't give a fuck. And sometimes the person that they choose or the people that they choose to put their trust in don't give a fuck either. And, um, all you would ever want in the world is a chance to be able to try and carry that ball after everything you sacrifice. And there's no promise or no entitlement or nothing you can do about it if that opportunity doesn't come along. And sometimes it's not always your fault, and sometimes it is. But um, that's a bit of a bitch that uh, that gets to me on a very guttural level. Very guttural level. The good thing about that is, um, the good thing about indie wrestling is uh, the lives that you touch, the relationships that you make, the memories that you're able to um, create in places so far away. The fact that I have uh, people I can call family 12 hours away, 14 hours away, um, across entire oceans. Um, the fact that sometimes you can go, that sometimes you check your Facebook and you have a message from somebody who doesn't even barely speak English but they can just remember being so affected by like you coming over for like a match or some kind of promo you did or something they caught from you on a DVD or whatever. The fact that they're just really catching you and feeling you no matter where you're at. And I think that's the greatest thing. And for right now in my career where I stand, I think the best thing coming up yet to happen is the fact that when you don't give up, when you exceed expectations, when you break ceilings, when you tell people that, you know what, fuck you, I'm right, you're wrong, 
about where I stand in this business and I'm going to show you and you actually succeed, I think that's the most awesome thing in the world. And um, that's what I look forward to being able to say when you ask me that question again. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us this week and, and coming on. Uh, uh, talking your career and everything that's going on for you currently. Uh, if uh, people want to check you out, obviously you will be at Super Indie Racing uh, Cedric Alexander in the first round of the tournament and, and hopefully uh, extending that even further. Uh, but uh, if you have any other upcoming events that people can find you at uh, or if you're on a social media, feel free to uh, plug away. All right, plus, bam, I'm getting good at this. Okay, <laughs> first and foremost, J June the 12th, I will be in Chicago, Illinois. Before I even get to Super Indy, I'm going to be doing a tournament the day before. Oh, just wow. a warm-up oh, yeah. for the tournament that goes <laughs> after. So I will be in Chicago, Illinois, um, June the 12th, for Freelance Wrestling's uh, one-year anniversary show, uh, Freelance vs. the World. I am in the title tournament, and uh, that's going to be in Chicago, Illinois, at the Abbey Pub. I will be going against the Human Tornado, which some would oh. say is a dream match. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. The guy's been on witness protection, and he came out just for me, and I'm so hyped. <laughs> so um, they're going to crown a champion that night, so I'm hoping I'm able to say that I won that tournament going into the Super Indie Tournament on June the 13th in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. First-round opponent, Cedric Alexander. We've only been plugging and talking about this for the <laughs> longest amount of time, and I hope to be able to change the game in that weekend. Week after that, June the 18th, Atlanta, Georgia, AWE, uh, to be the man, also crowning a champion that night in a 12-man tournament. So I hope to be able to be Ultimo Dragon out by the end of the month of June when it comes to championships. <laughs> uh, let me see. June the 20th, Resistance Pro, I will be defending my championship against Chris Hall. That'll be in Midlothian, Illinois, www.resistancepro.com for tickets. Um, July the 25th, Heroes and Legends, Fort Wayne, Indiana. It will be me versus Juventud Guerrera in the Nitro opener that never happened, but I am so excited to wrestle for. And um, if you're catching me at Sugar Dunkerton on Twitter, Sugar Dunkerton on Vine, I've been known to be very active on that lately. Sugar Dunkerton on Facebook for my fan page. It's Sugar Dunkerton with two S's. Um, .tumblr.com if you really want to get weird and see what's going on with my blog. And SugarDunkertonBro at gmail.com. That's where you can talk about all bookings, inquiries, all that good stuff. Uh, hate mail. I love getting all of it. I don't care if you, you say I suck or, like, you have a death threat to me. I'll read it. Like, it's cool. I, I was on your mind. Um, ProWrestlingTees.com slash SugarDunkerton. Please buy a shirt. I take care of my hair naturally, and it gets expensive, and that shirt money helps. Um... Other than that, because I I know we're about to get ready to wrap, um, I highly appreciate anybody that ever, ever cared, that even bought into anything that I've ever tried to sell, even when I wasn't trying to sell it. Um, this weekend is huge for me. And um, win or lose, but I'm going to say win because I'm being PMA all the way. Um, I'm doing this for everybody that said that something couldn't be done or it couldn't be you to do it. And sometimes you just needed to show people that, yeah, I am the guy to do it. So thanks. Awesome. awesome. Definitely. And then I encourage anyone, uh, if Sugar Dunkerton is in your area to check him out because it seems like a, a very good time to do that because, uh, uh, definitely seems very motivated and very, uh, 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 uh Looking forward to the stuff to come, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well. I'm looking so, forward to him becoming again. the tournament master this month. Yes. <laughs> Dude, if that ever happened, I want a card made, and I want it laminated. <laughs> hey. It's going to be the most awesome thing in the world. He just added one more nickname, man. The tournament master. Yeah, the I tournament. There you go. Sugar Dunkerton, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Sorg. Uh, once again, thank you, Sugar Dunkerton, and uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us this week. Uh, on the Indie Mayhem show, uh, obviously this was uh, uh, the last couple of episodes. There was big Super Indie uh, inspired thing. So be sure to go to Super Indie this weekend if you're in the Pittsburgh, PA, Elizabeth area. Um, there was a ton of stuff happening, obviously, in the indie wrestling world. If there is an indie wrestling show near you, go support it. Um, other than that, you can. Uh, uh, where can they find us, Sork? On, on on a multitude of different. Oh, uh, on the wrestling. Medias and 
yeah, and, so- and, and platforms and such. Right, on the WrestlingMayhemShow.com, on at Mayhem Show on the Twitters. We're talking about all kinds of stuff on the Facebook groups, Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, all over the place. A, a big thanks to our friend Basic Sickness for the intro-outro music, of course. Mike Allen, uh, PR on the Twitters, has actually been helping with show notes since we're doing this show a little earlier than usual. Sorry for the late nights for the Mayhem Show, buddy. Um, so <laughs> and uh, thanks, Matt Carlin, joining us in studio, hanging out. He'll be joining us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can join us live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 9 9 p.m. Eastern time, typically for the main show. We usually do this. We'll probably move back next week to 11 p.m. Eastern time uh, there as well. And uh, do we have a guest set up for next week? I know we have Mary Elizabeth Monroe scheduled for the 23rd of this month. Uh, Not anyone currently scheduled, uh, but I would encourage people to follow at Mayhem Show uh, for when that is announced. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, So until next time, please support Never said I was a gangster or thug when I'm an animal. Made up for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.